Okay, in this video, I'll show you how to maybe make these last longer. You see, this is, uh, I got some wind chimes going on here because it is windy as heck today. Uh, but anyway, if you watch the series on um, building this uh, grill and all of this, um, it is now time to deal with these uh, briquettes that are disintegrating. Now, if I slid these around or paid any attention to them at all, they probably would have lasted longer. The trays are under warranty. This is an Alfresco uh, 56 inch, I think, 56 inch all grill. But the stainless is fine. The briquettes are not under warranty. The stainless is, thank God, because these are almost $200 a piece. This right here, almost 200 bucks. And the problem is the screws, these screws right here. So they lock the briquettes in here because what they want you to do is flip this over and run it on high to kind of burn off the stuff, which I have never done. However, when it's time to replace the briquettes, which are, I think, 70 or 80 bucks a box or 80 bucks a tray. So you can spend 200 for the whole tray or you can spend 80 bucks for new briquettes. There's aftermarket ones, but you know, whatever. The problem is when it comes time to unscrew these things to replace the briquettes, they're toast. That, the screw is just, it's gonna have to be drilled out. And there's nothing that I can do about it. Uh, once it's drilled out, I will not be able to put a new one in. So then I'm gonna have to do like nuts and bolts. So I had an idea. Obviously I'm gonna have to drill all these out. But to make this easier, I thought what I would do is uh, put them, put stainless steel wire. Got this at West Marine. It's just uh, stainless steel wire and loop the wire kind of through here. Maybe make an X on each one. That'll hold them in place. And then I can just snip the wire when I'm ready to replace the briquettes and not have to go through this nonsense of drilling them out. And these, because they're so expensive, what I really should do is uh, save these and drill these out so that, um, yeah, these are in really good shape. I guess that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll keep using these, because eventually these will just fall apart. It's pretty heavy gauge stainless, but you know, with the heat, eventually it's gonna fall apart. So my current plan is to pull this out, drill out all the screws, put in new briquettes, right there, these new briquettes, and then save these, just stick these in a cabinet. Uh, and before I put them in, when these are completely toast, uh, go ahead and do the wire. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, I figured I'd test it, test my idea on this one.
it's actually really tight. Probably only need two for each. But there's plenty of room to do four. I was not able to drill these screws out, so I got my grinder out and just decided to cut the heads off. This was a way better option because it left the studs, you'll see in a minute, and I was able to use the studs as kind of a alignment platform just to help to keep those rails in place while I uh, twisted that stainless steel wire on there. You can see the studs right here. Anyway, this is super straightforward. You just align the little briquettes in their little homes. If you don't have an alfresco grill, I assume that most of these are put together the same way. And then once you get them all in, I got a little bit anal here and lined up all of the, or actually I alternated all of the little alfresco logos. But anyway, uh, place the rail, whatever you call it, and then uh, put the wire in just like I did on the other ones. Came out great, it was pretty time consuming. So I basically put an X with wire on every one of them. They're super tight. And um, I don't know if they changed their formula here, but these are white and these are kind of a brown color. So I'm not sure what the difference is, uh, but I'm gonna put some aluminum foil down in here so I can shovel in all that. And then I'm going to uh, hit the grate or the burners here with the pressure washer. And then I'll put the grates back in. And then I'll take a look under here and see uh, if I can clean under there. I love this grill design because it's basically just a stainless steel box. And there's a tray that slides out under the grill. To, that collects liquids. There's hardly ever any liquid in it. Uh, but you can simply remove everything and just shovel out the uh, charred remains after grilling. This is two years of grilling. Um, super simple. That sear station, I, pressure, I didn't pressure wash that. I just washed that with the power of the city water. And all of this dust and, and debris you know, turned into mud and came flowing out of it. So I was able to really open up all of those cells in this ceramic uh, structure of the thing. And you'll see at the end, uh, it lit unevenly, much like these burners are lighting unevenly right now. I did pressure wash the burners. They are super heavy duty. There was no worry about blowing them out, uh, but I pressure washed all of the holes. So now they're perfectly open. And once all the water burned off, it lit evenly. Uh, same with the sear station, you'll see there at the end. Uh, but anyway, uh, once it's all clean in there, I went ahead and just reassembled it. And I will uh, maintain this grill a little better going forward. This is at least two years of not even touching it. That's the griddle that Alfresco offers. We actually use that over the sear station more than we use the sear station. Uh, if you have this, it heats up really fast. It's, it's really fun to cook on. That is a 12 inch by 12 inch, quarter inch 303 stainless steel plate that I use as a heat deflector. I'll show you at the end. It actually stores all the way to the right there, uh, right next to the burner that I'm putting in now. It's totally out of the way when I don't need it. Alfresco should offer this as an option. I think I paid 80 bucks for it on Amazon and it is so functional. I'll show you at the end. The burners, as I mentioned, don't light evenly. And if you're, if you're doing this yourself, don't be nervous at all. See, as soon as they're all hot, they light up perfectly. These trays uh, are in very good condition, but there is a few spots that are deteriorating, so you can see where the failure points are gonna be eventually. Uh, but as you know, I have a whole other set, so not really worried about it. And now that I know how much work this is, I will rotate those trays around just to get the heat a little bit more evenly distributed throughout their lifetime. I'm sure it'll make them less longer. Here's that plate stainless, and you'll see here I just slid it right in here. I have to lift that uh, rack 
store that rack in the upright position in order to get it in and out. Uh, but I'm so pleased with this. If, if I could change anything about it, I'd probably make it 12 inches by 13 inches. But to have a piece custom cut was uh, about $150, and this was $80. So. This uh, looks like this now, but I'll show you a picture of it here at the end. It just needed to heat up. Uh, I actually used my blower to blow out whatever water was clinging to the ceramic. Ceramic holds water pretty well, uh, but um, once it was completely dry, it went right back to normal. Another thing I love about this griddle is you can just slide it around wherever you want. We usually keep it right there on top of the sear station, but it's the same width as a burner or a grate, and it's not as deep, so you can slide it back and forth, no problem. Okay, well, that's what it looks like. Everything is working, it heats evenly. We'll see how long these little stainless steel straps last, but if you have a better idea, please leave it in the comments. But hopefully I get a little bit longer out of these trays. I mean, I know I will, a couple years. And then I'll put these away, and when it's time to swap them out, I'll get uh, twice as long, hopefully. I think this thing is brilliant. It allows you to keep the grill hotter without lighting your food on fire. You just place it right under the meat, the little drippings act as kind of a little flavorizer steam action going on. Not really the greatest example because I kind of over seared those, but uh, I think I'm going to make a video on just this thing. So here's this sear station I wanted to show you. It um, lights up perfectly. Before when I had it all wet, it only lit up in the back. And I said I'd uh, show it to you here. See? Totally even. Uh, so you can wash these out with water and then uh, I actually used a blower to blow it out But that's really the best way to clean them. Maybe I'll do a video on that, too. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and see you next time